a very warm welcome from our side here from Schlotauer and Wauer to a new webcast. We are really happy that you joined us today. This webcast would be done on Lisa 8. Basically, this is how the interface of Lisa looks like when you when you open it. And the idea of this click along is to go through this basic example which I, we have created. And I show you basic and advanced functionalities of Lisa. Lisa is a traffic engineering software or workstation, which is um, designed to help you to, to develop signal timing plans. That is, you can develop and configure all information you um, an engineer need uh, for a traffic night intersection. Lisa was basically developed for a uh, German market, so it's a bit centered around world of OCIT. This is the uh, communication interface for a uh, road traffic control system, but it's not only limited to that. We will see that. Basically, uh, Lisa will help you to automatically calculate a signal timing plan and also does the calculation for intergreen time. Um, you can also further develop traffic actuated control plans with this. And you will go to a stage. It helps you to reach a stage where you just have to upload it to a compatible controller. Everything is, is, is in, in this one package. Um, we say that there are three pillars in uh, in Lisa. This is creation, evaluation, and testing. So the first step is to create an intersection. So you put on all the geometry. Then you calculate safety, you calculate capacity, and then it's the next step of uh, if you want to do a traffic actuated control. In Lisa, the first window which you see is this um, project management. And as the name says, it helps you to manage your projects. So this, this blue ribbon is um, the project management. Here is configuration where you just put, if you see this intersection, you try to put everything you see here, which is needed for your safety calculation. And then we have planning here where you um, calculate, define security measure, define stages, evaluate, test your uh, signal and your actuated control. Then there is upload, which Lisa provides you a possibility to upload directly to um, to some controllers or to some simulation. Um, yeah, softwares like Wissen, Sumo, Einstein. And then you have, um, I think this we don't need, support as us. If you have Lisa, we are available for you all the time to help. I mean, in office hours, of course. <laughs> and then um, there's also possibility to, to have, you can share your screen and we can help you there. Before I start with Lisa, something from Lisa 8 we have, which I would like to show is the new modules, what we have in, in Lisa. So basically not everybody needs to have um, all the functionalities. So that's why we have divided our um, Lisa into uh, basic packs, so to say. We have uh, Lisa small, which is for single intersection where you have to create just fixed signal timing plans, which I will show you in this uh, click along. Then you have Lisa medium, where you can create fixed signal timing plans along with coordination and green waves, which is also very sufficient for most of the world. <laughs> Then you have something called Lisa Excel, where you go a step further and design your own logics um, for traffic actuated control. And then you also have a test site where you can check your um, or debug your controls, what you created. And then we have some extra modules which are part of, of, of Lisa. Your, there's a possibility also to create map for CITS functionalities. Um, project management here is where you, um, you you manage all your intersections and coordinations and uh, which are created using Lisa. You can here create, copy, import, and export intersections. So let's start with the project. Uh, as I said, I've already created some, um, some example for you, but just to show you how it looks like. So first we click on this add button. You see I have put my cursor here an example so it already shows that we are in this town in this intersection and I'm creating a new new variant for this. So these are three identifiers for each intersection where the, the, the practice is that you write your city name here you have your um, your intersection name here as you see here and then you can write an abbreviation because the variant will change. For this I write zero zero. It's empty, that's why you don't see any um, uh, diagram here. To, to select this one, you double click on this. And then if you see it's here selected. 
once it's selected, we always do save and close and go back to our main window. Uh, but before I go to main window, I would like to show more things here. So these are the variants which I have created for this training for my colleague. Uh, once you click on each variant, you see the information about this variant. So the name, the, the intersection name. Uh, one um, important thing here is the guideline. So here we are using the German guideline, which is uh, RILSA. Uh, it deals with traffic lights and definition of capacity and so on. But LISA, as we are having this uh, training also in English, is not only limited to RILSA. And if you click here, you see the various guidelines we have in LISA to, to, be, to be used for your traffic uh, signal design. So we have um, Netherlands, uh, Flemish, Austrian, Polish, Hungarian, and now even in Israel. So all these guidelines are in, in LISA. If you are from some country interested in LISA whose guideline is not here, this is the point of this, <laughs> of this web along, uh, of this click along. So you're interested and you contact us and we put it here. So I go back to zero. If you're also here and I save and close, then as I said, in, we, we start with configuration, entering all geometric data. The first step is clicking on basic data where you see the screen, it's empty. The first step would be here. So we basically, we just need two inputs for your signal, fixed signal timing plan. Uh, creation. One is the site plan. It could be in various formats. I will show you. And then for the evaluation of your signal timing plan, you need um, um, flow, traffic flow. I click here on load site plan. Here it has so many uh, possibilities of uh, so many formats which you can which you can import. So I import this one here. Open. Click on OK. As soon as I import it, Lisa asks me to enter a scale, so all the length are um, in, in correct uh, distance. Luckily, in this plan, we have, of course, a scale here. Uh, first, I'll show you. I click on yes and zoom in, and then you click here from this point, and then you just drag your mouse. Is, you have clicked your mouse, and it goes to, to the end. So you enter 20 meter pixel to length ratio and then all um, everything which is put is as, as, as correct distance before we go a bit more further a bit explanation of this site plan so for people who are not familiar these are um, the four um, axes here you see the direction of, of uh, travel this is for for German specific right right um, right uh, sided travel here are the detectors which we don't need for fixed signal timing plans these are the signal groups which you see here for v1 v2 v3 v4 for each directions and then you have these german sign uh, right of way which is uh, if this, they have priority or if they have to yield so in this case this road has priority because you see this uh, traffic sign and this road has to wait for 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 them, if there were no signal, signal, uh, if there was no signals here, maybe in the night when they when they, the lights, the signal plans are off, then they have to follow these signs. Okay, so let's get started with creating our geometry. We have to put in. Um, we start from here and go until here. The first step is to put a leg axis. We simply click on this. We zoom in or as you want, click here. And then you could drag backwards. And if you notice, the cursor has automatically changed into a new lane icon. And if I click here on the right side, here, 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 it automatically assigns the arrival lane and here and here, the departure lane on the left hand side. Of course, it could be changed. But this is what the uh, the default settings is. I go back here and try to make it a bit cleaner because the stop line should really match the stop line of on the site plan because this is important for intergreen time calculation. So this is how you create an axis and then followed by lane. To do is to click on lane, you can check if you click on the axis, for example, you check the properties, the number, 
the the velocity if if I want to define the right of way, you can see in the in the in the site plan it's the main street. So you can apply for the main street. And that's that's all. And here for the lane, you can check if the direction you want to change, it could happen in trams or something. You can also change the direction, even if it's on the right side. As I said, the automatic is like this. And yeah, this is what we, we need initially. Then we can follow the same step for, for other uh, directions. Maybe I can just do one more quickly, uh, quickly. And here I go from here to here and then create one, two, three, and go back here and just try to make it a bit more beautiful or a bit more correct, so to say. OK, I save it. And before I go for next steps, I introduce you to these small icons up here. This is very important here. You see this intersection diagram. It will show you all the steps, what you have done until now in your in your plan. So if you click here, so it shows, OK, I have made two axes with these three lanes and you can check your number here. Is everything correct? How do you want it? If something is missing and if I just go here and click on one more axis, for example, here, it automatically will update like like this. So this is very handy and it trust me, it comes very helpful. It's very helpful when you are making complicated plans. Other than site plan here, you have the windows, how you want to see these windows, because many times you're just not working on one of these windows. In fact, you have 10 windows open and you want to see maybe some of them side by side. So if I open one more just to show you, you can click on this to have them like this uh, on side by side or up one above the other or cascade them. But the best view um, and the recommended view is this one, because here you know how many windows are open. Then after we have created the axis and the, um, the lanes, the next step is to connect these lanes. So as you see in this in this uh, site plan, the, the traffic is going left here and we click on we click here, simply click here and, oh, sorry, escape. I need a departure lane. So here and then here, so it's, this um, your connection is cr uh, created. Of course, you have to um, work a bit on the um, on the radius. So it's uh, is you get the right conflict point for intergreen calculation. And yeah, it should. These conflict points will be further used for for these calculations. And um, maybe I can draw one more. Here. And I click here, it goes straight. And again, on the connection, it goes straight. And then there would be one right down here, which we don't have, so I just keep on click save. How does our intersection diagram looks like? It now has the arrows showing where do the traffic flow. So left, straight, and straight in this case. Great. Once we have completed the, the connections for for the entire um, intersection. I mean, the axis, the lanes and the connection. We can now go for the pedestrians crossings and bicycles crossing. Um, to, so right now there are just three connections, but it could get really untidy with many connections here. So what I do is right click here and hide all travel paths. So it's, it's there, it's just hidden. We, we see there here is a pedestrian crossing. For this, we click on, on this crossing and simply go like this. And then for intergreen time calculation, it's nice to make it very precise. So here you simply just drag it. It's very user friendly. And then you have a pedestrian crossing for, for, for in your plan. Um, this, I think it should be um, another option uh, if you want bike on street. Um, we can also show it. Maybe I didn't show it here. I show all travel paths. When I click on this, this asks me for the transport mode, which is allowed in this. So 
maybe if let's let's just assume this was a traffic uh, it was just a bicycle lane i will just do bicycle but i've done both these are changes this color and red and red as boundary um for just bicycle lane it will just show different color it will, we know this is now bicycle lane and for bus you can do bus lane simply it will be it will be blue so we don't need it it will just to show you um how it is done and then again i will just save it and now we will also have a crossing on on our um, on our intersection so once we have the geometry the next step would be putting in the signal groups this is also very um i mean normally signal groups are by default here if not you can go on the window layout and just click here whatever you want to see in these windows in the property below property window I click on this lane here and you see the signal group is V1 and I type here V1 or W1 mm, and then you will have to allocate the signal type which is very important because it will determine um, how the signal uh, will run. Um, here you have various signal type defined for Germany. It could differ from each country, even in fact from cities to city, it could be different. For example, vehicle will have in this case green, yellow, red. Great. Okay. Um, here I add on um, that's for now. So we were here at assigning a signal group for for this lane. This simply we can do again for for another one. Let's say it's called it's V1L. It's for the left turners. It's also vehicle type, so it's V1L. And similarly, we can use for the for the crossing. Click here, plus, and Lisa automatically detects that it's a pedestrian um, uh, signal. In this case, you won't have a yellow light, for example. And you can put P2. Okay, and this has um, a P2 signal group assigned assigned to it. All right. Um, one more thing, yeah, I mean, in this crossing, you also see P2, A2 and FL2. So A2 is basically the acoustic signal. In, in Germany, we also have the, the sound uh, for people who are visually impaired. So they can they can just listen to it and um, cross the road. So here you can also define A2 and acoustic signal. So you won't have a uh, um, a color assigned to it, but like more, more or less like um, I will, I will show you how it looks like in in the in the diagram. I will save it, and this is how it looks like. I will open the variant where I have saved it completely. I close it, go back to project management, and open the version one. Here you see I have written a comment, uh, comment basic data. So I've made all basic data close go back here in the data and this is how it looks like after being completed so um all the lanes also detectors in this cases uh, maybe i can show you very quickly how you assign a detector uh, a detector so it's just this symbol here you click on this and you click on on the road where the detector is simply here write the name just write, write the test you can choose what type of detector is. It's more for the, uh, the documentation purpose, and you can put the distance, how big is the detector, and which signal group is dealing with this detector, and the function of detector, which is um, yeah, used in the traffic actuated control. And once you have it here, you can simply drag it. I click on this, you see the information of detectors, and you can drag and as per your need. We are ready now to go to next step. Once we have this information, let's save it and go to signal group. So basically to create a signal timing plan, you need the safety factors. Uh, an evaluation parameter is something uh, for the um, determining the quality of your signal timing plan where you give in the traffic flows. Here we come later, we just go and see how we can create a very simple basic fixed signal timing plan without giving the flows. I click on this module signal group. Under this module, under the symbol, you can see all the signal groups which were defined before. Uh, here um, it's very helpful to have an overview, click on this and then you can just cross check from, from the plan. 
uh, have a look on the symbols if it makes sense uh, with the diagram. And then you have the um, minimum green for six seconds. Um, you can change, of course, this This is nothing right or wrong. It's just uh, differ from uh, country to country, these, these values here. Um, once we are OK with this um, module, we close this. Basically, for for first uh, options uh, for the for the configuration part, we are we are ready to go to planning. But um, this this option of facilities is here. You it's just for documentation. It, it's about the number and appearance of signal heads. They are documented in this in this module. So as we saw in the diagram in the site plan, uh, the signal groups and you have to define the number of faces for each signal group. Um, as I said, it's almost only for documentation and we don't need it for creating uh, our signal plan. What interesting thing here is uh, if you go on the signal head properties, you have options to also define uh, what kind of picture or what kind of color or would you like to, to see. When I click on this, I get this, this window open. These are default in Lisa and you can add from other countries, for example, Austria and select one of them. So yeah, as I said, this is not needed for the single time plan calculation, but yeah, it's something interesting to show. Once we are ready with the configuration, so detectors public transport is more for the traffic actuated part. We can go directly on, on conflicts. If I click on conflicts, this is empty. What I can do is basically go back in basic data and ask Lisa to calculate the conflict for us based on these conflict points, which Lisa has um, seen uh, calculated from uh, or from these travel paths. I can just click on conflicts and do OK. So it shows that Lisa has found uh, 10, 110 um, conflict points. Now I go to planning again. And then I click on conflicts. So you see um, these are the conflict points calculated by Lisa. Of course, I mean, this is uh, safe, but this is not always the case because, for example, in Germany, we have something like permissible left turners. I can show what it means. For example, um, this signal group, just giving an example, these turners could get green at the same time with this um, with this uh, pedestrians. So they just have to wait for their turn and there will be a flashing light which says which is flashing and telling the car driver that there is a pedestrian um, walking here so just be careful so these two conflicting which lisa of course uh, determines that conflicts because safety first um, you can take it out based on your based on the regulations which you have so you can basically just say in this case um, yeah, for me, V2 and P3 are, or wait, where's V1? V1 and P4 are not conflicts. So I can take this out. And also in the case of P2, it's not a conflict. Okay, it's not anyway a conflict. Um, of course, uh, then we have flashing, it's not a conflict. I mean, depending on you, it's just to show you, you, you have to, as a traffic engineer, this is your work. <laughs> To, to make this conflict matrix, uh, check it properly, and it's very straightforward to, be, to say. Once you have created this, we can, we can just skip it now. It's not so interesting to show. I mean, you get the idea of it, I, I hope. We close it, and we go to intergreen time calculation. So based on the conflicts point, this is just one click. We just have to say, calculate here and Lisa will do the intergreen time calculation for us. So this is basically the most important step for um, for signal timing plan creation. And this is just done with one click. But of course, this um, has to be double checked by by the traffic engineers. Uh, for for the value, but let's have a look what this table uh, shows us. So basically, intergreen time for it, it is a needed time between um, end of a signal group's green time and the start 
of uh, conf conflicting signal groups green time. So that's the name into green time. Um, and this is calculated based on the input which we have given till now. Here is an option just to see. Uh, I click on the basic data here. And this is what I was mentioning about the times you need to windows open. I click here. And you can click. On each point to see where this conflict point is. So if I click here. You see this is talking about so between two signal groups, there are three possible conflicts. Because uh, this distinction is made and uh, in this uh, integrated time calculation based on the signal group conflicts. So this V1, V2, then you have stream conflict if it's going straight or if it's turning right. Um, and then you have further a substream conflict. If it's a vehicle, bicycle, or bus, it could, of course, vary the, the intergreen time calculation. As you see here, uh, this one is talking about this V1 and V2. One is going straight, V1, and here it's turning left. V2 is turning left, and here is the conflict point. And as the question was before, this person could also go here on this um, this one. And Lisa has also calculated that information, but in the settings we have we have uh, if there are two conflicts in this case. Yeah, Lisa has also calculated uh, that information if needed, but it was the intervening time was not necessary, so it's hidden in this information. Let's let's try to change this intergreen matrix and see what we can do. I close this. I go here. OK, so basically um, th this is based on, on German manual, this calculation in settings. There is a multitude of options how you can change. I will say again, there's nothing right or wrong. It just depends how you want to calculate your intergreen time calculation. Here we are based on crossing time, clearing time, which is calculated based on the geometry I will show. And then Lisa is just using the formulas inside to calculate our intergreen time. And you can tweak these parameters how you want them. You can see, I mean, I don't know, there are many options of, of uh, changing these distances, how you want it differs from place to place. Even in one, maybe in one state, you can have different cities with different of these parameters. You can change the speed for bus, you can change the speed for vehicle, you can change the, the speed for pedestrians, which is all used in uh, calculation of these values. So um, let's say if, if I change the speed or the, the length of these vehicle, uh, there's there's maybe, a, I don't know, a factory outlet and in this signal intersection, and there are just trucks on this intersection, and I make it, I don't know, 18, for example. So you see the signal time has uh, the it's it's changed to seven before it was uh, six and it made it um, blue and protected so it means okay there has been some change and the the intervening time has been increased so for it's it's used for the planner who sees it next time where the changes have been made this distance is calculated from lisa from the geometry which we did before and these are the parameters which were given uh, in the settings inside. So Lisa calculated the clearing distance uh, time for us and the entering time for us, which is then subtracted to get possible intergreen time for all these cases. And then Lisa takes the, the maximum time here. And once you are you and your colleague double check this information and you are fine with this intergreen matrix, you can just simply go and say fill my intergreen matrix here. And with this, an intergreen matrix would be fill. Yeah, I can save it. And here are the values of intergreen matrix between two conflicting motions. Here, of course, it's not correct because I didn't uh, change the conflict point. So you see some conflicting, uh, some intergreen time between two non-conflicting um, signal group, but just to give you an idea. Before I go forward with this, it's a time for a bit of summary because I assume I'm going a bit quick. So um, 
this is a project management window where we create and uh, edit our intersections. You have option to import uh, from here. You have option to export your created um, intersections. Um, once you have created, you can create a new intersection or co uh, coordination variant. Uh, you see all the information here on the right hand side. Then you can choose your guideline, which it has to follow for the calculation perspective and the evaluation perspective. Um, then we go save and close always here, and then you go to basic data where we define the kind of load a site plan. Uh, then you have to scale it. If it's not there normally, then you will have to, I don't know, go to Google Earth, see the distance, use anything for just to make it uh, correct to the scale. So the distance is calculated correctly for intervening time. Once you have scaled it, uh, then you, ha you have to define the leg axis in each direction. Then you define the lanes for either side of the axis, and then you define the travel path, crossing, and that's all for fixed signal timing plans. Once you have this, maybe um, I think in settings, yeah, you have an option. No, this is, never mind. Then you can just go to conflicts and create uh, conflict metrics by just clicking on this. Okay. Once we have do, uh, done this, then we go to signal groups to check if everything is fine, uh, because trust me, most of the time you notice it here that there's something is wrong. And then you, you, you change the direction. Mostly it's the type of vehicle for different countries. And you'd see check your uh, transport mode. Then we go to planning where we check our conflicts and we change them as per needed which will be used to define our intergreen time calculation to see which are the two conflicting uh, signal groups. And then Lisa will automatically, with the help of this, calculate the intergreen time for these conflicting um, streams. And then you can change it as you want and then fill your intergreen matrix. Okay, so we go. I go to a variant where I have done all this already, uh, intergreen time. As you see, I click on variant and I see the information which I have completed here. I go on the variant three, I close it, and this is how your intervene time matrix will look like. Okay, this one, I mean this I get to it right now. Um, this is what you did from your, from this is what you calculated from Lisa, and then you have option of creating more intervene time. Let me get test. Yeah. And this is initially copied from it. And then if we change, let's say, a value here, 12 seconds, Lisa will show you, OK, you have compared to last intervening time, a value which is higher, larger than the last one. If you change it to less or value, it will show you like a red mark that this is, this is less. That's all in this matrix. And then I maybe delete this matrix. I don't need it. And then we can actually in principle go already to creating a fixed signal timing plan of course it will be not very intelligent but just to show you just with this basic step we are there to create um, because we have the minimum green times and we have the intergreen time which you need for for safety and the, so i go i can show you this module already and then we go step behind um, to, to show how it can be done even in more um, refined way this is how your signal timing plan um, module will look like. We are now creating just, as I said, based on safety measures. Um, here you can calculate automatically. So it will ask us, OK, you want to just create your signal timing plan. I just click here and, and based on minimum green times, because of course there's no flow. Then you can also choose um, uh, cycle time uh, as it is an isolated uh, intersection and you want to see a minimum cycle time. We can work with, let's say, 60. This is more of importance when we have when we have a coordinated restriction, you know, when uh, from neighboring intersections, you know that the cycle time is 90 seconds, so you have to make it 90 seconds. We have this intergreen matrix which we created. And then we don't have any stages right now or any other information. It is using this German manual for evaluation, which cannot be evaluated because we have not given any traffic flow. And then we just click on next and Lisa creates stages for us. 
and it creates a signal time for us, which looks like like this. So here, what you have is um, we have taken into account the minimum green time between the conflicting intersections and uh, sorry, the intergreen times between two conflicting single groups and the minimum minimum green time. If I want to extend this, it will show us this red line which says, OK, you have and if you see below an error. And if I click on this, it will show you that there is an intergreen time violation because you have a minimum intergreen time of six seconds and three seconds are missing. OK, this this we will come in detail next, but we have to create a more smart, let's just say smarter <laughs> Uh, signal timing plan where we see the level of service, what is the flow ratio, and how good will this in, uh, signal time plan will be for my for my for my morning peak or for my evening peak or whatsoever. So I close this and we'll come back here later. And we go to to evaluation parameter where we define our traffic flow. This is how the empty window of traffic uh, evaluation will look like. And here we simply have to click on plus. And let's say we have this information of count for morning peak hour. We say morning peak hour um, from eight to nine. Yeah. And this will be in vehicles per hour. I, if I will just provide right now for our explanation, a constant value of 100. OK. And OK, no, this is maybe I can just create one more. Um, peak hour evening from five to six. And here, go here. So this is empty. And for it's always good to open it side by side, your intersection diagram, and then you can enter the values for each of these arms. So from one to two, from major to minor, maybe it's not so much, you put 50. And as you put 50 here, this is created. You see this diagram side by side. And we can complete this, which will look something like this in the end. And if you have the information, if you have the vehicle distribution, you can provide this information here. So once you click on 100, you can provide in how many vehicles out of this are truck or how many are bikes, depending on the modes which you have provided. If you have not provided that mode in that direction, Lisa will show an error that you have assigned truck here, but in your basic data here, you have just, this is only for vehicle. So you will either have to make it, I mean, you have to change it accordingly. And sometimes it happens that we don't um, because uh, for the this information is important for evaluation of your uh, signal timing plan to evaluate the capacity. If you don't know the, the information so in detail, what you can do is just um, OK, let's say I don't know this information and I just know the, the proportion of the heavy good vehicles and that's I do 20 percent. So Lisa will make this gray and it will look at this box for the for the evaluation of signal timing plan because as per German manual, it's it varies from each case to each case how you will evaluate the capacity. Okay, so exactly this is straightforward. You also have an option uh, to enter the pedestrians. In this case, um, if we check here, we have these three. Uh, we have defined for three uh, three arms, three directions. So you can give the values here, 100, and yeah, which also then used in the evaluation, these parameters. Next to the flow, there is something called parameters, where um, um, this is basically, you, you see in, I don't know why it's so zoomed in. Again, for an overview of, all the information for each lane which you have provided the, the if there is for example in this case i also comes very handy is a pocket lane because it of course um, um changes the capacity and then you have to define this kind of lane which is also could be done in basic data and you can check here what is the 
if you are provided correctly, if the distance lane, everything, uh, if the length of this pocket lane is okay. This, um, triangular island um, or something, you can also select here. And this all will be used in this HPS 2015 for the evaluation of signal timing plan. The German um, uh, manual. I will not save it. You have to save it every time, of course. Um, and I go to a variant where I have already saved uh, the, the, uh, the traffic flow. And this is how this looks like um, for, for our, when we have put three, uh, sorry for, this is in German, when we have put three traffic flows here, and then you have information for, and you have put in information inside here. Uh, something also interesting, you can check here. Um, you can see and the number of, uh, I mean, this is something which the city demands for, but maybe not interesting for you. For the heavy good vehicles, you can see number or in ratio, what is the percentage in this flow? Okay. Once we have this information, we have everything which we need for creating a traffic signal timing plan for safety point of view and from point of view of um, uh, the evaluation. There is something more which we can do is providing an offset. Um, this is uh, maybe I will show you once I create a signal timing plan. It will be um, here we can define the stages. So. Um, there could be multiple numbers. So stages is basically like a phase in, I don't know, in British English, it's, it's called a phase. It, it's a group of all single groups which are non-conflicting and with, which will be green at the same time. So how do we add it? Just let me click here. There could be two stage, three stage, four stage as, as the traffic planner uh, wants it. I would go with something like I create a stage for main direction, then the next phase will be for the um, turning directions and one phase for the minor direction. So one phase could have this, this V1 and V3 could have green at the same time. Then there's one phase for uh, for the turning vehicles, so V1L and V3L, and then one phase special only for my direction. As I said, it really varies from cases to cases, depending also on how much is the um, demand of these um, of these uh, um, sites, and it's basically used for creation of um, traffic actuated control, where you will say, okay, I will only go to phase three if there is a demand on this direction. Otherwise, I just keep on going on on the main direction. I keep it open. It helps me to select. As I said, I want to keep the, the main direction in stage one. So I go here on the table on the right hand side. And I say that V1, you see here, just right click on this. Uh, it should be in, in you see here in the stage one, and then we want V3. I right click, so it's important to right click on this. And along with these two, we can also have the pedestrians. Um, when I do right click, you see these red crosses. It's telling us that you cannot put these in this stage because they are conflicting. It automatically crosses it out. So, but I can put um, P4, and B2, so I can put P2. With P2, I need the acoustic for this, and I need the flashing light for this. And then I can also put um, B4. Stage two, we have the, just the left turners are uh, conflicting with the pedestrians because they just get like um, permissive green. So they can, they will have a conflict with this, with this, it's not like, in this case, where the right turners can go at the same time with the pedestrians and there's a flashing light. But in case of these left turners, nobody else get green. So we give to V1L and to V3L. OK. And the stage three or phase three could be for the um, 
minor directions and along with this, this pedestrian could also get green. So I right click on the V2. Is it V2? Yeah, it's V2. V2 and V4. And along with this B3, A3, FL3. So we have covered all the signal groups in our stage diagram. Of course, we can make it more cleaner, which is very, I mean, more beautiful or more user readable or however you want to call it, um, based on how the intersection looks like or anything else. There's option to move the these these symbols to move the the. The, 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 uh, the variables and make it larger or bigger or even I think rotate it or make it yeah something like this. You can also in I think in some countries it's not even I think I've seen somewhere that it's a square which I find uh, interesting <laughs> but I prefer um, circle here and once you have this then you can choose this is basically for for the traffic actuated control. You choose, OK, these stages are free to go from from one stage to another stage. Basically, in traffic control, you are working on these stage transitions most of the time. You see if there is a demand, then OK, go from one stage to this. If there's a demand on left turners and you are in stage one. So let's assume there is only main direction, which is always green. And you go to this or this phase only if there is a demand. So you check, OK, if there is a demand on this, uh, on, the, on the left turning vehicles in this direction, then turn, there's option to, to, to make a transition from stage one to stage two. And then you also have a possibility to go from stage two to stage three if there is a demand on the, on the minor direction. Anyway, this is, uh, as I said, more traffic engineering things uh, could get more and more complicated and more com complicated intersections. We we leave it here like this. I do save and I don't save it for now because I have an intersection which already has all this done for me. I go back to project management. And open something stage data. OK, so I check my stages. OK, this is, I uh, think, exactly what I did, but looks more beautiful with more clearer symbols, icons here. And of course, if our traffic actuated um, control, you have to tell which is your starting phase activation stage. So it's one. Now I go back again to signal timing plans here. And explain a bit of this module. Um, before I created an automatic uh, signal timing plan by clicking on this, and there was no flow it asked for because we didn't have any flow. Now we can ask, we are making it for morning flow. And if you remember, we have defined three flows in previous step for morning, afternoon, noon. We say, okay, we want it for uh, morning peak hours and I need it for 60 seconds. It OK, this is offset. OK, I will explain this later. Uh, it asks for intergreen time matrix, which is just one. So it's gray. We don't have an option to choose. And this I come to this aspect later. I do next. And it asks which evaluation method. If you remember, it was gray before because we didn't have a traffic flow uh, before. So it asks us out of these four German manual, which one do you prefer to evaluate your traffic signal groups, uh, uh, signal plans? And then since we have stages, we can say, okay, you can use the existing stages, what we have. Um, and it will optimize it for us. It says, okay, I've chosen one, two, three. We can do okay. And now you see it's so much quicker because we have given him, uh, given Lisa the, the sequences for us before it took some time. And now it has calculated um, signal timing plan with 60 seconds and with waiting time even less of 32 seconds as it done. And now you see here, um, which makes more sense, is our new signal timing plan with the level of service. I mean, to check this level of service, um, we can 
also go here to see how this is evaluated because this is all German manual which is used. You can in fact right click and go to log and check all the steps how it was calculated to be. I won't go in detail because honestly I also don't know. <laughs> and the main thing here is from Lisa perspective how we can change it. We will see these symbols up here. Before um, maybe I can create an, a manual single timing plan for it's used also in many countries. Just click on this plus and this window opens. It asks which uh, with which flow you would like to evaluate your signal timing plan. It doesn't matter here. So it creates like a, an empty window for us. Everything is F, of course. And then we say, OK, V1, I just give some random value, 20, enter, 40, something like this. Um, Either I can enter it manually, like how I did here, or I can select this one, which says set initiation, click here, and then click here. So it automatically sets us, uh, sets the um, initiation for us. Um, these red lines, which you see, are the possible intergreen. Um, Errors which could happen, so it's telling us to please stay away until this region if you are from V3, because otherwise I will have intergreen um, violation. So you can go uh, on with this uh, further, try to make it more. Um, if I, I can just go, go quicker here, then you have V4, which was in this phase, and then I mean, I don't need to, it will take time. But you, I think you should get an idea of how you can you can further go on creating these things. And once you click on this arrow, you see this blue um, thingy here. You can extend the signal plan to here without violating green time. So it was here before, or I don't know here, and the level of service was B. And you see that there is a possibility to to go green to here and you change the level of service to A. So this is how you can play with the signal timing plan to say or yeah, I mean, of course, in real time, it's more much more than that. Um, this is this is what to set the initiation and this is to set the termination, of course, where it where it ends. Then you can also have the possibility to add comments, which is needed for um, um, if you need to give some information to the planner, I don't know why it's not working for now. Yeah, comment. The window is opening somewhere, but I don't know. Oh, here. Oh, I added many more comments. <laughs> so you see there are more comments added here because I was very patient with this button. And once we have this one, what is more interesting in signal timing plan? Um, these are the stages which you see, uh, which we created before, and you can open your intersection now here. And you can check side by side what happens if I increase this here, so it will show the level of service on your intersection, which is, is very useful to have this visualization to see how if you change the screen time, how it will affect my level of service here or which one is this? Like, OK. Yeah, anyway, this is for, for pedestrians. Or here in this case, here. So it becomes E. And if I make it like here or B, whatever. Yeah, so this was it from the signal timing plan. Uh, more, which is um, creating of activation plan, creation of deactivation plan, which means that once you switch on your controller, it will directly not go into the signal timing plan one, but it will start with an activation plan and it can just do automatically for us and it's created. That's all. So if you turn on the controller, it will. The, the traffic signal will look something like this. It's dark and then it goes to the green. And then you need something uh, like something called the activation points and deactivation points which are um, here so activation point you give in the time here that okay once my controller is started and it starts from 15 seconds here 
then at this activation point, which I have given here, it will switch to this signal timing plan. I will show you this in uh, test site, which is where it will become more clearer. So I will not show it here. Um, what I can show you is uh, offset where I go back here and maybe six. Yes, perfect. Where I have created many more signal timing plans. Um, here you don't see the um, OK, I think this is time we're explaining a bit of more of the properties, windows and settings. Here we don't see the level of service. So we go to settings. And we go to columns and we see we want to see the level of service and we want to see the flow ratio graphic. OK, um, so you get this idea of this is the level of service for all these uh, signal groups. And you can see, OK, it's not happening for other signal signal timing plans just for for the first one. Then I go here. Columns, same thing and make it apply it to all types normal. So columns and select what I want to see here to, for, to display and then go back here and select apply to all types of plan normal. And now I should see them everywhere. OK. Here, once you click here, <clears throat> It will show you um, the name of the signal timing plan, the, the cycle time, the ID number, and if it is fixed time or if it is traffic actuated, and if there is an offset use. So which brings me to our next topic of offset. So this is what offset looks like. Um, I open signal timing plan side by side and I make them both like this. Okay. So offset is basically it matrix is allows you to uh, this this matrix which you see here you you enter your offset conditions for the beginning or end of green for non conflicting signal groups. What I mean is that if there is a beginning of green for one signal group, uh, it should start at the same time as beginning of green for another signal group. Or if there is some other information, for example, we see here uh, what I can show is uh, something interesting here. Yeah, we, we, we for pedestrians, if uh, the flashing light keeps on going on later, even if the pedestrian has got red, because of course for safety it's uh, for safety purpose the flashing should go on because even if it's not green, the pedestrian is still crossing the road. So we tell here at the end of P2. Um, here at the end of P2, make sure the flashing two goes on for 12 more seconds. So I said uh, P2 equal to FL2. Uh, so from P from end of P2, it goes 12 seconds uh, before the FL2. So that's what you see here. It gets over here, the end of uh, A2 and P2, and FL2 is going until 14 seconds. And same here, you can define, for example, equal to zero, V2 and V4, which says that V2 and V4 in the minor direction should always start at the same time. So these conditions are taken into account uh, for, for creation of a signal timing plan. And what happens if I change it? So we see here that V2 and V4 should start uh, at the same time. And I make it like this. And now I should get here, if you notice, a blue color on OCB, which means that I have violated the uh, offset conditions. It's not an error because it's not, you're not dealing here with maybe some intergreen times. It will show you warning, depending on how, if you define it as a warning or as an error. So this is from the offset. What uh, what we define and then it's used here in, in our conditions to create this these signal timing plans. All these conditions are used in in this. Then I said uh, said something about the activation, which I will I will show you later. And now we can go to time switch. Once you have created your signal timing plan, maybe I don't know three plans they are actuated, but we can now have to tell the controller when to start them and what time of the day. For that, we have time switch. Something which looks like this. And then you say, OK, I add one. 
And in the morning, let's say at seven o'clock, I want my controller to switch on and start with signal timing plan one. Even if it says signal timing plan one, when it, there is a command on, it will start with an activation plan before. And then you say, OK, at seven, I don't know, the peak hours end at nine o'clock, and then I want it to switch to signal timing plan two. And here I don't want any uh, traffic actuated because this signal timing plan was traffic actuated. So it was if it was only fixed, this will be great. And then you can say at in the evening when there's again peak hour and whatever, then you switch back to signal timing plan one. And in the night when there is no more traffic, you can just to switch to signal planning three. And then you just want all off. At after I don't know. This is something it, it looks like your your plan. Uh, you can create this and call it maybe um, this is for weekday, and then you can add a new day um, plan. It's called weekday. Sorry, I just go a step before. I can create one more of them, and maybe just for weekend. There is not so much traffic and I don't care so much and I make it like seven o'clock. There is just one and then at 15 o'clock. So just some random numbers. Just to show you and then you switch to single plan three. OK, so we have now two plans. This is weekday, this is weekend. And then for you say on weekday plan, we have this default. Um, maybe I can just delete this. Uh, this is called plan one, which is on Monday we have default until Friday we have default and then we say, OK, Saturday we have day plan and Sunday we have day plan. I mean, this is the wrong name, but you can. Um, you know what I mean by, by this. OK, and once this is created, you can also assign some special days, some holidays, and that's 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 all and we are ready with a fixed signal timing plans. Um, or for uh, Lisa Small to say with these steps. And now I would already jump to the next uh, step, what we have here. But before I jump, I will just give a very brief, quick summary. Um, after we created this basic data and checked our signal groups, we checked the conflicts, the intergreen time, and we, once we have the intergreen time, we can create offsets, which I showed of telling uh, the non-conflicting signal groups if they sh should follow some rule, or if they should start at the same time, or if they should start before or end uh, before, or depending on th these two cases. And then we go to the signal timing plans and create our signal timing plan by just clicking here, choosing the, the, the parameters which we needed. Um, and then we, um, yeah, uh, went to the time switch to define what at what time of the day which signal timing plan should be on. Um, one thing which is also important for documentation but not for creation is these, these uh, what you see here. If you want to get it printed or not, you can just here and select the information which you want to display or or not. You can just remove it or yeah, then it will be something like this. I go to the next Lisa module which is called Medium where you have another um, we can have now we have created fixed signal timing plans and now we want to do a coordination for um, for a corridor. Uh, this could also be done with fixed signal timing plans, but you see this is not highlighted because we just have selected one intersection. For this we need a corridor of course and then I go back here, I remove this. you can remove it just by double clicking on it and if we have more, you can just right click and say remove however you want to remove them. I have already created one uh, coordination for us, um, but it's very easy. You just click here, click on the coordination variant, and then you just choose the intersections from here. Um, how it should so let me. Yeah, I mean, I should not show this. You will just choose the intersections from from, from this um, module which you want to see in the coordination. 
So what happens if I, let's say, open signal timing module? It asks me which intersection I want to open because there are so many selected. So it will ask for all modules, for all the modules, which intersection I want to open. Um, when I go to coordination for the first time, normally this, this is how it will look like. Imagining there is nothing here, no coordination. It asks, so these are all the intersections what we have, and it asks us which is the signal group which you want to, which is in the coordination direction, in the direction of travel, and also in the opposite direction. <clears throat> and here you can choose it. And I mean, it's, uh, I go here, and this time when I ch choose the intersection, that instead of showing all the intersections which were there which is fantastic. <laughs> and then here, looking at these signal groups, you can see, OK, I need V2 here, V2 here, V3 in this direction, V2 in this direction, and V2 also in this direction. And in opposite direction, I mean, depending for when are you coordinating, uh, when are you optimizing this for morning, evening, and you make this V1, V1 in the opposite directions. So this you have selected here, the, the main direction and the opposite direction. Uh, and what else you need is the distance. So this distance, if not, I mean, there are many you can have from Google map or this is given to you. You basically cal uh, measure this distance from stop line to another stop line and same for in the other direction. Uh, once we have this um, here, so these are all the intersections here. And we have for all the intersections, the various signal timing plans for different cycle time. When I choose cycle time 53, it doesn't, um, it makes everything else yellow uh, because they don't have the same cycle time. This is what I said before, to make a coordinated uh, corridor, you have to have same cycle time for, and then if you choose 75 or 90, then every, they're not yellow anymore and you can choose. There are signal timing plans in all of these intersections with cycle time 90 or 75. Maybe it's a good idea that I make a new one. So you, you see how it looks like. I create this one. I call it click along. Okay, and then I choose maybe 75. And that's all. And then this is what Lisa creates for us. So you see uh, in coordination, so um, this is a time distance diagram which is created based on the distances, the signal group in main direction and the signal timing plan um, for for uh, for each intersection. Each line here, each um, uh, vertical line is representing an intersection for both direction. So these are our intersections in this case, and these are the distance between them. And this projected line show you, um, this is like a speed of 50 kilometers per hour in this uh, at which a platoon will arrive the next intersection. So here, and this is the green time, which you are getting um, in the signal timing plan, and you see uh, platoon will reach at, at what time. And our objective is to give uh, them a green wave based on whatever you want to optimize. If you want to optimize waiting time, if you want to optimize number of stops, we'll see them how, how we do it. So once we have something like this, maybe we can go here, uh, sorry, go to the settings and check on, we want to see uh, what, if there's a green wave um, created. Of course not, because I see that this uh, the vehicles coming here are stopping here, and there's also no overlapping here or here. So what we can do is either click here and um, moment. We can move it a bit somehow, you know, one of them. So you can get some green wave at some point of time, but I think we should click here maybe. So we try to optimize these offset manually, but of course, imagine if we have 20 second green here, 20 seconds here, 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 just imagine, and we have to move one second up and down. The, the number of permutation combination is infinite. That's why we have an optimization algorithm inside Lisa, which will do it. OK, this is um, the parameters which, which we evaluate our coordination. 
and you look here, it doesn't look good because the it's uh, the level of service is EFT, and we want to optimize this this uh, this what I created right now. So to do that, I'll just click on this. Uh, please select my intersection. Um, here in Gordon optimization, I have to create one more. Um, I have to create one optimization um, for for the flow. We we select the morning flow. We go next, and it asks us what do you want to to optimize. If there, if you want to optimize the waiting time, if you want to optimize the criteria in in the German manual, or if you want to uh, optimize uh, this performance index defined by by us, Elisa. Just just let's go for coordination criteria. Uh, I mean the max the optimization could vary to 500, but let's leave it on 25. These are the iterations which this uh, algorithm will go through and we will optimize both the directions and okay we do next and you see that lisa is now taking time checking all the possible um, permutation combinations of <laughs> this offset to give us so using this downhill simplex algorithm it has created uh, a new optimization criteria for us where the level of service has improved to C, C, and D in this case. And you can, you have possibility to check. Okay, once we have this uh, optimized uh, coordination, we can add it here. And then you see we have created new signal timing plans for each intersection. And we, we st still see this red mark, which means that we have not saved these new signal timing plans created, these optimized ones, in our signal timing plan. So I click here and it asks, OK, you have created this new signal timing plan. And what do you want to do with this um, for each intersection you have new? So you can say I want to overwrite it. I want a new one or I just don't care. I don't need new one. So let's let's say we have new one for. And it's all 11 everywhere. OK, and now. We have created no signal timing plans here. I go back to our signal timing plan. And if I open one of them. This 11 is created now based on the. On the optimized criteria what we give. So this is added to all of the signal timing to all of the intersection. OK. Um, this is all from this much more in coordination. Uh, I mean, you can also check here um, this, this density for each uh, this. Uh, what is the density of vehicle? If it is too dark, it means there are more vehicles per kilometer area. And if it's lesser and lesser, it means that the, the jam is getting clearer. You can also check the um, the opposing directions. You can also check the additional directions. There is like myriad of things you can do here. You can select how the vehicles will uh, approach at the intersection. Uh, there is a big property box. As I said, there is another training just for coordination for three hours. So we, it just doesn't make sense to go here in details. I will um, close this and just uh, we have half an hour. Good. We are good on time. We, uh, I can give you a very quick overview of how logic looks like. It, here I right click, remove all entries, and go to the AP pre logic. Once you have created your uh, fixed signal timing plan, there is an option of going into the world of traffic actuating control. Uh, the great feature that Lisa has, it's, uh, it supports a variety of manufacturers where you can directly upload the control which you developed and tested in Lisa, so without any fundamental uh, alterations. Um, here, as you see in upload, these are the controllers which we have in Lisa, where you can directly upload them, uh, upload. And also check your logic and or your signal timing plan in these platforms. OK, um, how do we run these things in controller? So Lisa is basically um, uh, development environment. It might look like a uh, graphical software, but in actual it is being developed to source code Java or C++. This is how once you use these uh, block diagrams, it's writing its code, something like this. 
and this will be uh, ex exported. So you basically also don't need too much experience with programming language, and you can just define these blocks, um, uh, and you could yeah, which is uh, which could be defined by the standard libraries in, in Lisa, and then yeah, this will be ch changed into source code uh, by Lisa. So this is how this interface look like of traffic actuated. Um, you have these controller functions, libraries. Basically, you are checking the state of detectors, the signals if from the controllers. I, I, I go to the easiest one, like detectors. You check if there is a demand on detectors. So you just do dead demand. And you can imagine you do something like if else, like you make, um, I, just to give you how it looks like, a brief um, introduction. Every second, or it could depend also from country to country, um, and you are checking with this function, which is defined in Lisa in this library, stage active phase one. So by clicking on this, you just click, uh, put, okay, um, under here, I just do it below, and you check something like, is stage active? Simply, it means a uh, condition. And if it is active, you check if the minimum green time is reached for all these um, all these uh, signal groups. If it has not reached, or if it is reached, it depends on this. If it has reached, if it is not reached, you continue doing it. And if it is um, not re uh, if it has reached, then you check if there is a demand on the minor direction or on the left turning vehicles. If there is a demand, you check by this, uh, which we have defined before in pre-logic, um, where you are defining all the detectors input. So you are checking for the, um, if you check, click here, I know it could be a bit difficult to understand, but I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. Um, so if you have demand on three and eight for uh, three or eight, which is there is eight, uh, this will be uh, this will turn yes in this case, or if you demand DS3 will be checking demand on this uh, for one phase. And this another thing is called uh, extension detectors, which are basically to extend your green time. It, yeah, it's, it's it's a time gap method in Germany. Maybe I should not go more in detail in this one. And Exactly. Using these uh, block diagrams here, you can check the demand and then you can switch to the phase which is needed. Uh, this is a very basic, simple diagram. And then if there is a if the minimum green time has reached and there is a demand on the um, sec for, for the turning direction, then this uh, st stage transition will be on. So it will move to stage two. And with other conditions, if there is no demand, it will go to stage uh, uh, three. Okay, um, this was a very, very, very quick uh, <laughs> introduction to the traffic actuated, of course. I mean, I thought it would be nice to show it because the next thing I'm going to show you is traffic um, test site, um, where this knowledge will be a bit more needed. So test site is an embedded um, simulation of traffic flow in, inside Lisa, where you can check if your logics are fine or um, you can debug your logic. What how we can do is do this is we go in menu, we click here in the simulation, in the simulation network. Okay, and this window is opened, and I do okay. So there is already a test site, and it's asking if it should be overwritten. I will not, I will not do it, but normally you click on yes. So we clicked here and simulation. And we go here, go on the test site. <clears throat> OK, and you see here that um, this is funny that why it's you don't see the moment. OK, so based on the all the information which we have given in the um, basic data, you see a simulation network is created here. Um, here you can choose on the left side 
the signal damming plan which you want to run in, in this control panel. Then you have all the washed values. Once you are running the, the, the simulation, you can see which signal plan is running right now. <clears throat> and what is the value on the detectors? These are the detectors. And um, then which stage is active um, and, and so on. Here <clears throat> you can, if you want to change a bit of your um, simulation plan, sometime it could happen that the detectors are not correctly assigned. Then you go on the edit mode and then you can maybe move your um, move your detector something like this or even you can create with the help of this if you have some experiences with some simulation software so it's more or less uh, the same you have these nodes you have the links between nodes and you can just add a node you can give some name and yeah you can then link them using simply like this that's about it. This is how it will be. That's how it, this is created. Mm. This is automatically created from Lisa for us. Um, as I said, there's possibility to change them. Then um, we can right click here. A uh, moment, I will just remove these nodes which are created. Yeah. Then I right click here and I check for which traffic demand I want to do the simulation. Let's do the morning one. And I let it start. And here you see the way okay, I can make it maybe real time. So it, it helps you to visualize. I mean, it will be used in logics uh, because you see, okay, the detector here, I can go on the detectors. It shows that the detector is uh, currently occupied and how it will is going in my logic, if it is making sense or not. For that, you have option to switch to logic here directly when you are doing traffic actuated control. And you can debug it by clicking on this and you can check where is my you can also put like a debug button to know okay i want to stop if you know a bit of programming you know what this debug button is and for people who don't it's just you know you're setting like a breaking point here to tell your program just stop here when the logic reaches here then please stop here and i want to check the values so basically with help of the simulation you are debugging your uh, your plan. But this is actually something normally when you have to debug your logic, you don't use such complicated um, uh, number of um, vehicles. You, there is a possibility to create your own tests. So what I do, you want to do, uh, I clicked here on create test. And here I can create um, one test, which I say, OK, I just want to test. Uh, uh, all the detectors are, let's say, for pedestrians. Um, I don't want this. I just want for pedestrians to be on from randomly be between um, between two seconds to 300 seconds for minimum of one second or 10 seconds, because mostly this is uh, random. You know, I mean, this is nothing right or wrong. It's just how you want to test it. Or you also can create a test routine where you want to check what happens if all my detectors are on. Or if you want to check only the, the left turning um, detectors are on. So there are various possibilities of without using these um, traffic mm. flow. Um, you can just use the uh, this test um, scenario, uh, your test routine, for example, I can do all detectors on and I don't take in any um, uh, traffic flow and I run it. Uh, so I will remove the breakpoint so it doesn't stop here. Um, and the traffic flow is run. Yes. OK, now here you see all the detectors should be OK here. We check the scenario none and routine all detectors. I think it's only for the uh, for the pedestrians. All are on here and you can check how your. Traffic signal plan is changing. In, in this case. 
So all the detectors are on. This is the, the test um, routine which we selected. And in this case, we see if all the detectors are on, only the main direction is getting green. And if I want to get, let's say, um, the, just let's see how it happens when I want to have the left turner D3 on. So I turn off all of them. Here you see. I don't see none, none, none. Yeah. Okay, so it means none of the detector is on and is currently in. You can check which uh, it's going basically as. Fix, uh, fixed signal timing plan, and if I change, uh, if I put a demand on one of the detectors, it will show, okay, this is a detector, there's a demand on this, and it changes accordingly, the signal timing plan. I mean, this is shown very, very um, quickly to show what is possibilities, which could be done also in case of traffic actuated. Um, I would say this was it for the first introduction of Lisa. Thanks a lot for joining us today. And as always, we are at your service if you have further questions. Please contact us at service at schlotower.de if you have any technical questions or if you want to quote an offer, have uh, any sales related questions, then please contact us at lisa at schlotower.de. Thanks and have a nice day.